Okay, so the Fed just held its meeting for the month of March. Now they don't typically hold a meeting every month. I think it's like eight times a year. So this was the March meeting. And what they decided to do was raise the interest rate by 25 basis points. If you don't know what that is, that's essentially half a percent or 0.25%. Now, a lot of analysts had expected this to happen because of what took place over the past previous weeks with the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. And I think the Fed was probably more poised to go up 50 basis points, but when this happened, there was a little bit of a shift that took place. So 25 basis points seems reasonable not to kind of shock the market into some crazy, um, something crazy that's going on. So I think they were conservative, but they also kind of had to do this, right? Because it was either don't do anything or raise interest rates. And I think in the face of all this, the Fed wanted to send a strong signal that it is really, really committed to bringing down the target inflation rate back toward 2%. Now, there was some things that were said in the previous meeting that I talked about in the last video when the Fed ha had its sem semi-annual meeting to talk about monetary policy. And Senator Warren really asked Chairman Powell a very direct question, and I want you to listen to his response. So Chair Powell, if you could speak directly to the two million who you're planning to get fired over the next year, what would you say to them? I would explain to people more broadly that, that inflation is extremely high and it's hurting the working people of this country badly, all of them not just two million of them, but all of them are suffering under high inflation. And we are taking the, the only measures we have to bring inflation down. Okay, so you heard his response. So we're gonna put a pin in that. And here's why this is really, really important. Now the Fed had been very committed to raising interest rates, but because of what happened with Signature Bank and Silicon Valley Bank the past couple of weeks, they kind of took a little bit of a pivot in that approach in that they said that they weren't necessarily committed to raising interest rates if there was going to be lending policy tightening or credit tightening that was going on in the financial market. And why he said that is because the Fed looks at credit tightening the same way that it looks at raising interest rates. The effect is really the same. So what they were going to do was look to see if credit tightening was going to happen. And if so, there was a probability that they probably wouldn't raise interest rates. But if they didn't see that, then there's a chance that they're going to raise interest rates. Now, currently, the Fed funds rate is sitting at 5%. So it just went from 4.75% to 5%. It's projected to be at 5.1% by the end of this year, which means that we're going to see at least one additional rate hike happen before the end of this year. Either it's going to be a 400 basis points or they may spread it out and do um, four more rate hikes at 25 basis points or two additional rate hikes at 50 basis points. What they're going to do, I have no idea. I don't even think they know what they're going to do right now, but let's just get back to this. So here's the deal. Currently, inflation is sitting at 6%. Now the Fed wants to get that number down to 3.3% by the end of this year, then again down to 2.5%, the projection is 2.5% at the end of 2024, and 2.1% at the end of 2025, which means if all things work the way that they want it to, we will come out of all of this in about two and a half years. So the end of 2025, right? Here's why all of this is important, and I'm gonna go back to what Senator Warren talked about. Jerome Powell was specifically asked about his monetary policy and whether it would have an effect on unemployment. Pay particular attention to what he says, and I'm gonna play this for you right now, so listen very closely. We have to bring inflation down to 2%. The costs of bringing it down, there are real costs to bring it down to 2%, but the costs of failing are much higher. Did you hear what he said without necessarily saying it? What he's essentially saying is, look, there are going to be some casualties of war, but it's for the greater good. Would you rather see 2 million people out of work or would you rather see 20 million people out of work? And this is why this is important for you to really pay attention to, because the 2 million that could possibly be affected by being essentially fired or unemployed 
are usually people that are on the lower end of the economic spectrum, which means their jobs are a little bit less likely to be extended because I don't wanna say they're economically viable, but I'ma just use that for a lack of better terms. Those are people that are economically viable. Is it fair? No, do I think it sucks? Absolutely. But if you are one of those people whose jobs may be in jeopardy, right now is the time for you to pay particular attention to what you're spending and curbing back on some of your spending and increasing your savings. Because if this takes place, we're probably gonna see at least another year and a half, closer to two years, where the market for employment gets really, really rocky. For those of you who are employed right now, how it affects you is that you're probably not going to see the same type of bonuses or raises that you would expect to see working on your jobs. And that's because companies, their increased cost of borrowing is also going to affect you. So I've talked about this before. What happens when the Fed raises interest rates? Particularly in the mortgage industry, it's not a direct correlation. That interest rate is more tied to the 10-year treasury when you're talking about a 30-year mortgage. What they do doesn't have a direct correlation, but it has some trickle-down effect because when that news is announced, lenders bake this into their interest rates into their pricing. But for companies, that increased cost of borrowing means it costs them more to make the same goods and produce the same services that they normally would produce. Well, when you're in a, an inflationary environment where the consumer that you're servicing is deciding whether to get brand X or brand Y and the shopping comparison is made on price, you can't pass that cost onto the consumer. So how else do you kind of offset that? Well, you have to decrease something, your overhead expenses. And one of the biggest overhead expenses is, you guessed it, employment. So employers are going to probably start laying people off. We've seen this happen in the tech industry which is one of the reasons why SVB went under is because they couldn't, the depositors pulled that money out. They couldn't pay for a lot of stuff. And so they had to sell off the bonds that they held, which I don't know why they would hold, hold them that long. Everybody knows if you hold a bond at 1%, chances are interest rates are gonna increase. And when those rates increase, the price of that bond goes down. So when you have to sell that bond, you're selling it at a discount, which is exactly what they did. So when companies are laying people off, they're also looking at making sure that they are not raising wages at the same time. So if you're looking for a raise to come on your job, depending on how well your company is doing, you might not see it. That's one thing to keep in mind. The other thing is when the Fed raises interest rate, it has a direct correlation on things like car loans, school loans, private lending. So think credit card. So if you hold a high credit card balance right now, try to pay that joker off as fast as you possibly can. Because the thing you don't want to have happen is your rate goes up, your payment goes up, and now you find yourself displaced from work. So these are why these are partly why these announcements by the Fed of our particular importance, not just to investors, because they're waiting for these meetings to happen so they can figure out how they're going to either um, divest in stocks and move closer into bonds or they want to just go all in on stocks. They're looking at how to diversify their portfolios based on the announcement that the Fed is going to make. You want to do the same thing. How are you going to kind of maneuver when the Fed makes these announcements? Don't just see it in the headlines and think, oh, it doesn't have an effect on me or it has a very minimal effect because it very may well be that your livelihood is at stake based on what the Fed is trying to do. So in the event that we do happen to go through a recession, I created a video about some things that you probably want to get ready to do um, just to make sure that you are not caught being in a position where your family is struggling. So again, make sure you're paying off those credit cards, make sure you are uh, doing all the things that you need to do to stockpile as much cash as you can and building skills so that if you are displaced from one job, you can try to go pick up another job as quickly as possible. Again, I sympathize with a lot of people that are gonna be affected by this because two million people out of work, yes, it's a small drop in the bucket compared to the, the whole, but that's still two million households. That's still two million lives that are that are affected. And I don't wanna be insensitive to that, right? So that's why I'm creating this video so that you are well aware and well equipped to deal with what's coming down the pike. Again, 
the Fed raising the Fed funds rate by 25 basis points is not going to have a huge effect on the market right now. But if that target of getting that Fed funds rate is up to 5.1% and we're only at 5% right now, depending on what numbers come out when we're talking about the PCE numbers, the CPI numbers, when we're talking about the unemployment numbers, when we're looking at what's going to happen with um, GPD, or I'm sorry, GDP, when we're looking at all of that stuff in conjunction, it definitely is going to have an effect on you. So again, I just want to make sure that you all are prepared and that you're listening to what the chairman says, because frankly, if, if truth be told, the Federal Reserve chairman is probably the second most powerful man or woman in the United States behind the president. You would think the vice president is, but no, <laughs> the Fed chair directly is going to control how the monetary supply ebbs and flows within the country. And because each one of us has to have money to basically circulate, it's vitally important that we pay attention. Now, how we got here, I've talked about videos or I've done videos talking about that. I won't get into all of that right now. If you wanna check them out, just I'll leave links in the description or I'll just put it at, at the end screen. Make sure you check those out, but also make sure you check out the video on things that you need to do to prepare for a recession.